Good morning. <laughs> it's terrible when you've got to spend 20 minutes getting the computer to recognize the camera and I had to reboot and start all over again or otherwise I would have started probably about oh, 11 minutes or so ago. Uh, but it wasn't ready for me at that time. So I, everything is in divine order I'm learning, even the frustrations that we have to go through. Anyway, all of that is a preliminary to what I'm actually going to be talking about today. The title is Ninth Wave Divine Synchronicity Civil Disobedience. And I wrote a little blurb. What are the odds of getting two quotes about civil disobedience in the same day? It happened to me yesterday. I used the first one in my twice a week email reminder to Metagroups list. The second came in our class last night, drawn randomly as the topic I was to talk about as we are exploring public speaking in our class at The New Way. Anyway, twice in one day, civil disobedience. Yesterday I received this quote, and I actually put it, as I said, uh, in the Metagroups community calendar uh, blurb. I have a thought for the week and a thought for the weekend each time I send it out. And for 8.15, the thought was a quote from Harold, Harold, yeah, Howard Zinn. And he was, uh, I looked it up this morning, he was actually a professor at Boston College. I thought it was Harvard or something like that, but no, it was Boston College that he was a professor. He was a playwright. And I just looked up a little bit to be more up to date on who Howard Zinn was. I know I've read many things by him over the years. Uh, and I knew he was a professor, and I found out he was a playwright, and lots of things. Anyway, he said, civil disobedience is not our problem. Our problem is civil obedience. Our problem is that people all over the world have obeyed the dictates of leaders, and millions have been killed because of this obedience. Our problem is that people are obedient all over the world in the face of poverty, starvation, stupidity, war, and cruelty. Our problem is that people are obedient while the jails are full of petty thieves and the grand thieves are running the country. That's our problem. Who? I liked that, which is why I shared it with all of the people that are on my Metagroups list, which is basically for the, a reminder for the community calendar to check the new events for the weekend. I do that every week, twice on Mondays and Fridays, every week. And I'm getting off my topic by giving you the asides, but I want you to get the whole picture. As I said last night, I drew randomly from a little bag what was to be my topic for the public speaking class. And I drew this little piece of paper here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Civil disobedience, it says at the top. And they were all quotes from or things about Martin Luther King and quotes by Martin Luther King. And I'll read that one as well. King considered mass civil disobedience the next step in nonviolent revolution after mass protest. Civil disobedience not only transforms the legal system, it transforms the activist who practices it. Quote, words cannot express the exultation, remarked King, felt by the individual as he finds himself with hundreds of his fellows behind prison bars for a cause he knows is just. An individual who breaks a law that conscience tells him is unjust and who willingly accepts the penalty of imprisonment in order to arouse the conscience of the community over its injustice, is in reality 
expressing the highest respect for law. Today, I'm going to be preparing my response to the latest motion by the lawyer of representing the bank to stop the appeal. I will be speaking firmly because I'm tired of all the craziness and the insanity and the injustice. I'm tired of psychopaths running our world creating wars for profit. And yes, it's always been for profit. I'm tired of the injustices and the stupidity of stupid little local rules like in Orlando and I pointed this out last night. They passed an ordinance that it's against the law to feed the homeless in the public parks because I guess it makes people uncomfortable having all these homeless come into these nice parks and seeing the problem because people don't want to look at the problem. So the police come in and they're told arrest these people that are breaking the law by feeding the poor. I mean, do you hear me? This is in Orlando just a few months ago in 2011. This happened this year. This year. And people willingly broke the ordinance and willingly got arrested. And then I also pointed out the young lady, I don't remember her name and I didn't take time to look it up this morning. I apologize for that. I didn't know it last night either. But she was an American and she went to stand in support of the Palestinian people in Gaza as, as the Israeli government and military was wrecking havoc wrecking havoc with their big machines and their war machine and their tear gas and all the things that they do because the real terrorists, and I'll keep saying it over and over again, real terrorists are people with money. They are not the poor. The poor get frustrated and might lash out with stones and Molotov cocktails or something, but the real terrorists have much bigger, much more sophisticated weapons to use against the little people, the people that they're, that they're unjustly treating as the people in Gaza and many places around the world. It's too, too numerous to name and I'm not even going to attempt to name them. And I have more time today to do it than I did last night. Last night I had five minutes. Today I have a 15 minute window. But anyway, that young lady went over there trying to stand up for the Palestinian people and the Israel ar army one person operating a bulldozer actually ran over her with the bulldozer. She was trying to stop the bulldozer, just like the little Chinese guy in the Tiananmen Square thing back in 1980, what was it, seven or eight or somewhere back, back at that period of time, where he stood in front of the tank and the tank would move and he'd move in front of it. He kept moving in front of it. Well, in Gaza, the tank didn't, the tank driver didn't try to stop the, the, the driver of the bulldozer was either blind, which I doubt, or just totally insane like the leaders who make the rules and, caught and cause all these problems because they don't get it or because they're trying to wake us up. And this morning as I was meditating, I thought of Jesus and I, let me think now. <laughs> it came to me clearly back, back an hour or so ago. Right now it's escaped me. Oh, when he when he healed a, a blind man or when he made a, blind, a lame man get up and walk and the religious leaders tried to lay the trip on him, you broke the Sabbath. I mean, come on folks. When these leaders, whether they're religious leaders or whether they're political leaders or whether they're corporate leaders or whatever, when they do things that are unconscionable, it is not only our right it is our duty as human beings to speak up. Now last night, one of the speakers talked about injustice and she took a King quote and she says, I think that one's bullshit. There is no justice in this world. And I don't think that this is her total message, but what I was getting 
is deal with it, live with it. There is no such thing as justice. People are born unequal. They're not born equal. Some are born with silver spoons in their mouth, while others are born destitute and impoverished. Some are born healthy, while others are born totally unhealthy. And she made some valid points in her, in her little five-minute talk. And another person got up. These are both board members getting up, by the way, and I'm on the board as well. But these are two of the board members getting up, and the, and the second board member said, I remember things happening when I was growing up in the, in the 60s. I remember things happening, and we didn't get all riled about the Vietnam demonstrations and things like that that were going on back then. I'm, she says, I'm more aware of it now than I was then when it was actually happening which to me was a beautiful sign of the awakening. People are becoming more aware of the injustices and the insanity of our, quote, leadership, because we need new leadership. It's time to stop letting the dollar and other financial instruments run the world, because these are fraudulent instruments. And that's what I will be pointing out again in the appeal as I prepare the documents again today. It's time for us to stand up and stand up firmly and let our voices be heard. Here in the United States, they have demonstration zones around some of the public buildings where you're only allowed to demonstrate in this little fenced in area. We're not allowed to take it to where the people can actually see it and hear it and know what's going on and know that the people are protesting. They have those here in the United States, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Give me a break. I'm so happy to see people standing up around the world telling telling the media, telling the people that are running the government, telling the people that are, that are satisfied in their, little, in their little contentment zone because they have their, all their things taken care of and they don't want to address the injustices. They don't want to address the inequalities. But all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable, unalienable rights that are among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are not laws that are granted to us by a ruling elite or by a court system or by a corporate government. And that's all it is. All of our governments, the, doesn't not just the United States, all of our governments are corporate entities being run for profit. They're all being run that way, folks. And, it's, and this is the root of the root of all of the problems that we have in this world. It, we have a financial and a monetary system that is insane. And it's run by people that are maniacs, absolute maniacs in service to themselves. But unconsciously, unconsciously, the inside job reflects the consciousness of the people. And we are awakening, aren't we? We are changing and turning the tide. We are becoming aware of the, of the insanity of our system. And it's time to start speaking up and stepping up. Stepping up to the plate. I got an email this morning that I read a comment from yesterday's recognizing the inside job video. And it, I think the person's name is Jack, but it's sort of buried in his handle on YouTube, but he wrote, great points, Ron. I'm a spiritual warrior, and it's not easy for me finding peace in this world. All I see enrages me, and I think that is because so much of what I see is way out of spiritual balance. Sometimes I think spirit does a good job at keeping me angry or mad. I don't know why, but I guess it's so I can fight it the best I can. It can be hard at times knowing how good, good things could be and living in the current world we live in. At least the world is changing a little quicker during this ninth wave. Indeed it is. And that's the point that I'm wanting to applaud everyone about. Look at the changes. Look at the people that are standing up and being civilly disobedient. And if you're one of the civil obedient people, remember what Howard Zinn said, you're the problem. Because when enough people stand up, there's no way the system can continue the way it has been. It's time for a change. That time is now. 
I leave you with these thoughts. Namaste.